Hey everyone and welcome to another episode from Lucky Fish. Normally we're doing videos on sailing but this week Zaya suggested that we do something a little bit more personal. I'm Stuart and this is Zaya. Normally we are sailing our reasonably priced catamaran, Lucky Fish, across an ocean or around the islands. But this year we stayed in Mongolia to have this little guy. Subscribe and join our journey. After 95 episodes, probably time we told some of you viewers a little bit more about our private lives. So let's kick it off with a question for Zaya. So Zaya, tell us a little bit about growing up in Mongolia as a child. I grew up in a real countryside part of Mongolia, in the gear nomadic lifestyle so my dad used to take me to school every day by horse. Nomadic lifestyle is pretty simple life with not many things because you have to move the house by each season. I'm pretty proud of my background. So if I was in the dog world I'd probably be called a bit of a mongrel. Um, Mum and Dad are English. Uh, Dad uh, fought in World War II. He was a frontline infantryman and was captured um, and sent off to a German prisoner of war camp. After liberation, he and Mum married and had my two older brothers. They were born in the UK. Uh, and then during the 50s, you know, there was the start of the Cold War and Dad thought, well, both Mum and Dad thought they didn't want to go through all that again. So they looked for a place on the other side of the world as far away from England and Europe as possible. Uh, and they emigrated to New Zealand and that's where I was born. Um, and I, I, I'm really proud of them for making that decision to, to get out of Dodge. Uh, and we had a great upbringing in NZ. Uh, and then I left New Zealand when I was about 17 and went to Australia to study geology and marine biology. I travel on a British, um, Australian and New Zealand passport. Uh, I've also been a permanent resident of Canada and I'm currently a permanent resident of Mongolia. So that's how I've ended up becoming a bit of a mongrel. So Zaya, do you have any phobias or fetishes you'd like to share with the audience? Well, I'm not going to share a fetish with you. <laughs> fetishes with you but um, I'm very afraid of blowing balloons and opening champagne so I'm gonna go get Leo. Yeah but you're not afraid of drinking it though. No I'm not afraid <laughs> of drinking it. Daddy. Hello little boy. You're just waking up. Want to say hello to everybody? Hi. Hello. Yeah you got a nice smile there. Did you have a good sleep? Too many questions. I've only just woken up there. <laughs> you want to sit on your banana or Bobby? Put him in the banana, why not? <laughs> you going to let Mummy and Daddy finish these questions, Leo? You can. Yeah, if you okay. give me, if you feed me and give me something to play with. So what about you, Stuart? Uh, what do you mean, fetishes or phobias? Yeah. Uh, we'll start with the phobias. I wasn't really aware of it, but um, Zaya made me aware that I've got a bag fetish or phobia. Apparently I what, collect... What colour bag? Well, they're generally black. <laughs> black bags. And uh, it wasn't until she pointed out the collection that I've formed over the years that I realised that she probably has a point. In fact, I do find now I have to correct myself when I go into a store because I'm drawn to the bag section and I start handling them and <laughs> looking at them and imagining what I might do with them. But uh, I can assure you it's all purely innocent. I, I guess it's just um, a preoccupation with travelling, moving, packing things and going. I don't know, maybe that's it. So Zaya, tell us a little bit about your name. Is Zaya your real name? Well, no, that my real name is Sarnatetik Bukchulun. It's very long, right? Yeah, it's a mouthful. Sarnatetik Bukchulun, can you say it?
Yeah, Sanatitik Bukchulon is my full name. The Zaya is just one we come up with. <laughs> why did you, why did you, why don't you use your full name? Oh, it's too long, especially when we travel, you know. Almost everyone we meet, they can't say my name. Let alone spell they it. They ask me to spell it to them and look, uh, you know, you get tired of it. So it's Zaya now. <laughs> I like Zaya, I think Zaya is nice. It, uh, it's you. Mm -hmm. So Stu, what would you be now if you were not geologist? Uh, I, gee, I never really look back and think of what ifs. Uh, what is is really more important and it is what it is. I decided to become a geologist mostly because there was employment at the end of a geology degree. If I'd studied marine biology there was just a absolute glut of marine biologists coming out back when I was studying. So I'm glad I ended up in geology. It, gave me the money to travel, um, also gave me the opportunity to travel with my work um, and helped to fund a, a, you know, a preoccupation with sailing, which is, <laughs> which is not the cheapest uh, pastime. But yeah, I don't, re you know, I have no regrets or I, I don't really think of what else I could be doing, you know. You would have been marine geologist then, a marine, no, marine geologist. biologist. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I wasn't smart enough to be an oil geologist. They're generally the very smart ones. Um, but uh, what I am happy to say now is that I'm turning my back on geology and doing a lot more sailing, which is really my passion. And uh, I have dabbled back in geology again just recently as we try and feather the nest and get ready for some more sailing. But um, I've got to say, each time I go back into that, career I feel more and more isolated from it it's uh, when it's not your passion you know you, you can't fight it um, and uh, it's there just to, to earn money and that's a pretty cold-hearted way of uh, going through life so I'm glad I've resigned twice now from <laughs> from my career hopefully this is the last time so Zaira outside the world of sailing what uh, are you most proud of in your life uh, recently I found out that I'm, I'm a course freak. A course freak? Oh yes. Well, it means took lots of courses. Yes. Like um, diving course, photography, dressmaking, Chinese language, English language, <laughs> even mining for non-miners, diploma for computer programming, a diploma for business administration, skiing course, sailing course, social media marketing. I would like to do the RYA courses next year. What do you want to learn about sailing that you don't already know? I want to become a master. <laughs> <laughs> you want to become a master? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Play with this thing. Ta -da! Jolly jumper, jolly jumper, jolly! <laughs> 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 I don't want that, my mom. Isn't. So, um, so RYA courses. What what is it that you want to learn? I want to learn more about the navigation. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So I can sail away from you alone. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. We'll see about that. So, Stu, what are you most proud of in your life, apart from sailing? Well, I guess our most recent addition to the family, little Leo. I mean, who wouldn't be proud of this little creature? But I also have two uh, fully grown up sons um, who I'm also very proud of. Uh, they live in Canada. One of them's a carpenter and he volunteers for the Sea Shepherd organisation. And my other son is an engineer. Raising those two boys back on Magnetic Island, I'm very proud of that time. Magnetic Island is an island off the coast of Queensland in Australia. and. Uh, I guess if I'm allowed to, one more thing I'm very proud of is uh, learning about permaculture under a guy called, an absolute legend, called Bill Mollison. And, uh, and then buying an acre of land on Magnetic Island, which was disused pineapple farm. It was virtually like desert. And turning that into a food forest over many years, over about 13 or 14 years, Firstly bought the property next door making two acres and then planted thousands of trees mostly food trees and turned that desert into this amazing food bowl 
Um, and not only that, but it was an experiment also to see whether you could capture rainfall, put it into the water table and increase the net balance in the water table through swales and minor engineering of the landscape. And it worked very successfully. So to me, what I learned out of that and why I'm proud of it is that all the solutions to our problems we already know um, and we can turn deserts into forests and there's examples around the world where people have done it on much bigger scale than, than I did um, and so looking at all the fuss and bother about saving the world we know how to do it it just takes uh, effort and a bit of willpower What are you proud of Leah? Will tell us later. You've got a good set of ears on you, mate. I don't know where you got those from. You think that's from your mum's side or from your dad's nice. side? Hey? Dad. We might have to tie them down if it gets windy out there <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> so, Zai, tell us how much travelling you've done. Before I met Stu, I lived in the United States for three or four years. Texas, New York, mostly in Washington, D.C. All in all, filled up five passports and visited 20 countries, so I do enjoy traveling. Yeah, well one of the neat things that we all enjoy about traveling is the foods that we learn. In Thailand it was the green curries, South Africa we learned Susie's famous chicken and cauliflower cheese, in St Helena it was a beautiful broccoli blue cheese soup, oh, in Grenada chicken rotis, in America we learned about the Thanksgiving tradition and the turkey and the cranberry sauce so now that's become our tradition wherever we are and then in the Bahamas it was crack conch thanks for that one Brandon that is awesome mm -hmm. um, for, I mean out of all those foods which do you find which country have you enjoyed the food the most uh, France but we can't cook French so we have to go to France to get some French food. French cooking, yeah. The thing about eating in France is no sooner have you finished breakfast than you're thinking about what's for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that one. And uh, we're all just going to sign off now. As always, leave your comments below. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. And thanks very much to our patrons. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and thank you for watching.